The Gamers Dorkness Rising is a 2008 ultra low budget film about a group of friends who get together to play Dungeons and Dragons. It's a pseudo sequel to the short film The Gamers and has a pseudo sequel of its own, The Gamers Hands of Fate. Dorkness Rising was written and directed by Matt Vansell and produced by Dead Gentleman Productions, a small independent studio formed by a group of students who met in 1996 at Pacific Lutheran University in Tacoma, Washington. Dead Gentlemen have been creating low-budget movies since 1999, with the most prominently known being their Gamers series. I've never played Dungeons & Dragons myself or any other tabletop role-playing game, but I've always wanted to as it looks like a fun social activity, but I've never had a similarly interested group of friends to play with. Dorkness Rising is the D&D movie I always wanted. Not an epic CG cacophony, but rather a small, heartfelt comedy about a group of friends just looking to have a good time. All of the gamers' movies are standalone stories, sharing some of the same actors, but mostly different characters. The sequels contain occasional callbacks to previous movies, but are otherwise self-contained stories. Basically, I'm saying you don't need to have seen the original gamers to enjoy Dorkness Rising. Similarly, while familiarity with D&D and role-playing games in general is helpful in understanding many of the jokes, you don't need to be familiar with them to enjoy it. Dorkness Rising is a well-written, funny, endearing, and heartfelt movie and a fine example of how good writing is far more important than special effects or high production values. I'm not sure what the exact budget for Dorkness Rising was, but I did find this old Kickstarter page for its sequel, with a target goal of $320,000, so I'm assuming it was around that amount or less. The movie is written intelligently. The group of friends aren't myopic D&D fanatics and have other interests and lives outside the game. The new expansion for Samurai Baseball comes out on Friday. Looks very cool. You strike out. You commit seppuku. We're playing time felons. We get to go back through time and, and beat the crap out of historical figures. I, I totally bushwhack Lincoln. It definitely avoids cliches in general. We don't know who might be watching. Indeed. Only in hiding one's identity can one truly be known. The one female newcomer to the group winds up being more knowledgeable and effective than the other players, but not because women good, men bad, but because she's taking the game seriously and wants to be a valuable member of the team. The movie isn't interested in hammering in social commentary, just having a good time and warming the heart. The movie also wisely sidesteps any romantic subplots. There's some chemistry between the male and female leads, sharing some more intimate one-on-one -on -one moments, but their relationship is left ambiguous. There's the potential for a romance between them, but it never goes further than that within the scope of the story. Dorkness Rising isn't interested in telling a grandiose, epic fantasy tale. Rather, it follows main character Kevin Lodge in a simple, down-to-earth story trying to get his group of friends to socialize and to finish writing his D&D campaign module. The movie flips back and forth between the group's real life and their in-game fantasy story, each being written well enough that I was invested in the outcomes of both. The movie knows its budget constraints and doesn't reach for more than it's capable of. Sure, storming the villain's castle on top of an erupting volcano would be quite the show, but the gamers doesn't have the time or money for that. A cheap looking production would normally work against the movie, but in this case the low budget enhances the comedy and makes the cast more endearing. Everyone loves an underdog, and the limitations the cast are working with clearly make them that. Dead Gentleman has been releasing movies since 1999 in relative obscurity, which is more motivation than I've had in my life. Many low-budget movies fall into the trap of attempting more than they're capable of. There's something to be said for working within your means. Dorkness Rising's costumes, sets, and props are basic, but they work. They look amateur, but they don't look bad. They get the job done and allow the movie's good writing to carry it. I had no idea it was so late. You get so into it, you can't help but lose track of time. Yeah, it's just like surfing the internet for poor political commentary. Nice dodge, Gary. Whatever else it may be, the movie is very likable. He who stumbles around in darkness with a stick is blind. But he who sticks out in darkness is... fluorescent. Lose 50 experience. So far, my commentary has been glowing, so let me temper it somewhat. Dorkness Rising is a good movie, but it's not a masterpiece. 
the group of guy friends mostly act like the stereotypical man-children that geek characters are unfortunately often portrayed as. Rude. I can play any character that I want. I'm asking to play a basic character class and you're blocking me. I play monk or I don't play. Lacking self-awareness or social skills. You losers can call me sorceress. Yes, that's right. I'm playing a chick. Dude, are you hot? 17 charisma. Wanna have sex? Totally. Awesome! I seduce him. Her. Yeah! Irresponsible. Listen, we need two more players. Don't you have class in the morning? Yeah, in like five hours. Why? And unable to speak to women. Bikini mail? What the hell is bikini mail? Some arguments between the guys, instead of being funny, feel uncomfortable, like you're watching your real-life friends getting into a heated yelling match. This is what happens when you mess with the rules! What were you thinking? Maybe that it would force you to roleplay! What do you think we were doing? I wish they'd been written as more relatable. Awkward, perhaps, but not self-centered and puerile. Some moments drag and could have used better comedic timing. The movie sometimes shows its limited budget, and it's not the most amazing thing I've ever seen. It's just good, and sometimes good is good enough. Glenn is alone with the grimoire. I stab it! Wait! I backstab it! Good call. Y you can't backstab it. You can't sneak attack an inanimate object. Why not? It's prone. It doesn't have a discernible anatomy. It's got a spine, doesn't it? It's funny and has heart, which I think is all you can really wish for in a comedy. I had a good time. Me too. That was different, but cool. Mostly cool. While I originally only wanted to discuss Dorkness Rising, I think it would be incomprehensive not to acknowledge the other gamers movies or Dead Gentlemen's other works. The original gamers doesn't perform nearly as well. Outrageous! It's short at only 47 minutes and doesn't devote enough time to tell a good story. It doesn't have proper characters functioning more like an impromptu documentary videotaping of a real gaming session with nothing more to it. The extremely low budget often shows in bad audiovisual quality and it lacks most fully, mostly using the in-camera audio. Castle's almost certain doom. He recognizes you instantly. Snarls. A lot of the comedic timing is off with many shots lingering too long. However, it's still funny and the quality doesn't drop low enough to make it unwatchable. And that'll totally make up for that orphanage we burned down. It had some good comedic lines and was satisfying enough to keep me interested in the sequel. I also don't think it's fair to hold a college student film to the same standard as movies in general. When I originally set out to make this video, I remembered watching the original Gamers movie and its sequel over 10 years ago, but I didn't remember the third movie and was unaware of Dead Gentleman's other works. In order to be comprehensive, I watched everything by Dead Gentlemen that I could get my hands on. The gamer's Hands of Fate changes gears by following collectible card games rather than RPGs. The characters and dialogue are a lot more hyperbolic and writerly. Hey! Other beard vase. Boom. Card me. Take this scene. If anyone actually did this in real life, they would be kicked out of the store immediately, but the movie treats it as a joke. Man, you are like an anti-montage! The movie unfortunately treats most things as a joke. Girls suck at games! Hey, here we go. Honey, could you make me a sandwich? We both know you don't need any more carbs. It's overly exaggerated and feels fake. When we cry havoc! havoc! Cry havoc! As someone who's personally been playing the Magic the Gathering card game in stores for over 10 years, not enough feels authentic here. The movie is also far too long, clocking in at 2 hours when the story could probably be told in less than 90 minutes and includes pointless digressions. Come on! Hate me more! As a result, Hands of Fate isn't bad per se, but it wasn't as endearing or engaging to me like Darkness Rising was. Many of Dead Gentlemen's other works are part of the Gamers series or at least related to tabletop gaming. For example, Humans and Households is a short parody series in which a group of fantasy characters roleplay as modern-day humans. It's strangely overtly political at times. You're an athlete! Can't you get away with crime? Only murder and sexual assault, neither of which will help us here. 
It's okay, though I did particularly enjoy certain comedic lines. Can your activist guilt the door open with his favored cause? Sadly, no. His favored cause is the environment. You didn't take war? Now that his president is in the White House, he no longer cares about that issue. Whatever criticism I have of their work, I respect it. To work for so many years in relative obscurity and maintain their quality with such low budgets is very admirable. That being said, Darkness Rising needs no qualifier for its quality. It's not just good for a low budget movie or good for an independent film, it's genuinely good. If you haven't seen The Gamers, Darkness Rising, I recommend it. Most of Dead Gentlemen's works can be viewed for free on YouTube, including The Gamers. Links are in the description.